at it again, and New York had its primary. Yeah. Let's dive in. Another huge primary night in America with possible implications for the midterms. Progressive candidates having a rough go at it in New York. Impeachment lawyer Dan Goldman ousted far left representative Mondaire Jones. The Hold on, isn't that the guy? Isn't this that what? Hold on, let me see if I can find that video. I think this is the same guy. Hold on, wait a second. Enough of you blaming mental illness and then defunding mental health care in this country. Yeah, it is him. Enough of your thoughts and prayers. Enough. Enough. You will not stop us. If you guys didn't see the reaction video that I did to this a while back, listen to what he says. It's absolutely insane. From advancing the protecting. Enough. You will not stop us from advancing the Protecting Our Kids Act today. You will not stop us from passing it in the House next week, and you will not stop us there. If the filibuster obstructs us, we will abolish it. If the Supreme Court objects, we will expand it. And we will not rest until we have taken weapons of war out of circulation in our communities. I think that's a cause for celebration right there. The guy who just openly, openly said, you know, F your checks and balances system. If it gets in the way of what it is that we want to do. Oh, we'll circumvent it. Your Supreme Court? Psh, we'll just expand it. <laughs> I think that's a cause for celebration. He lost. Get to stepping. <laughs> Midterms, progressive candidates having a rough go at it in New York. Impeachment lawyer Dan Goldman ousted far-left representative Mondaire Jones. The guy who gets Democrats elected, Sean Patrick Maloney, won his primary over an AOC-backed challenger. And Florida voters picking former Republican, now Democrat, Charlie Crist over a progressive to face Governor Ron DeSantis this fall. But the most delicious highlight of the night was this bitter feud between two sitting Democratic House lawmakers. Career politician Jerry Nadler cruised to victory, ending Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney's 30-year run in Congress. Maloney Jeez. lobbing claims of sexism over her bruising loss. The Rock women fought sexist systems and misogyny that continues today, as we know from my own campaign. I'm really saddened that we no longer have a woman representing Manhattan in Congress, bringing and we cannot and we must not give up. The fight continues. All right, Dana, she got walloped. She did. Uh, there was a redistricting that pitted two, you know, of the liberal lions in the House, Nadler and Maloney. But for her claiming, you know, misogyny yeah. and all that, isn't that kind of an old song? And Well, remember, they've been in Congress since 1993, two, 1992. Yeah, so they've been there. They've been serving Jeez. together. The Democrats have completely screwed up redistricting in New York. And that's why you see these results. So then you have Carolyn Maloney and Nadler have to um, fight against each other. And the ads got really nasty. And I'm kind of sad it's over because it was kind of fun to watch. Like, you're senile. Well, you're sexist. Yeah. And they, they're having this big fight. Then there was a third person, Siraj Patel, who tried yes. to have to play spoiler. But Nadler, I think partly because he was so visible during the impeachment. Tr Trump impeachments that the liberals of New York City said, that's going to be our guy. I also think it's interesting that Mondaire Jones lost because that's a member of the squad and now there's, they're down one and you know who's probably celebrating today? Abigail Spanberger. <laughs> you know, when Hey, I'm celebrating too. Mondaire Jones? Pfft, that guy cannot be in there. You know, at all. He, hey, he, he, he doesn't need to be in any office whatsoever. Not even mayor of a city. <laughs> Anybody who openly says stuff like that, nah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. When you talk about the squad, the, the progressives, and I'll go to you on this, uh, Harold, the progressives did not have a great night. Whether uh, it was the AOC-backed uh, candidate Biagi uh, or the one that she wanted supported Quayler against his Narrows, mm -hmm. uh, the AOC-backed candidates did not do well. 
uh, and Max Rose won against a progressive as well. What does that tell us looking at the midterms? Dems are more moderate. The national message for Dems, they understand to be successful. They're going to, they, you have to distance yourself from dysfunction and be more aligned with progress and more aligned with uh, outcomes, serious outcomes for people. Two, the biggest race I thought in the state last night was the Bellwether state where yeah. Democrat Pat Ryan beat a very popular, I believe he told me, a fellow named Mark Molinaro. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a two-point race uh, in abortion and freedom right, freedom of women's freedom and w women's choice played a huge role in that race. So again, we talked about polls the other day on the show. No poll right now is is decisive or conclusive, it's instructive, but I'll tell you this, these are actual numbers with actual voters voting. Democrats should be pleased with last night, and the country should too, because if Democrats get back to the middle, we have a fighting chance, not only as a party, but I think as a country to get things done. And then two, Democrats won a key, key district here in New York. You know, Jesse, they talk about the decision, the Dobbs decision, uh, you know, not really affecting that many people. But I think that the one race that Harold just referenced, and that's the Mark Molinaro uh, uh, race Ryan. and Pat Ryan race, uh, that was pretty much all on abortion. Uh -huh. And Molinaro was a very popular guy. Uh, should the Republicans be concerned about this now? I am concerned about it, so they should be concerned about it. Yeah, I'm a little concerned. I'm not going to lie about it. <laughs> you need a okay. I am concerned. I mean, it's a big concern. All right? I'm not going to lie. So, it, is this the best we have, this crop of candidates? You look at someone like Nadler, who looks like a hobbit. He's representing the richest district in the entire country. But he Is won. that the best we can do? He won. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, no one else wants to run for Congress on the Upper East Side or the Upper West Side. I live on the Upper East Side. I see beautiful people walking around, tall, healthy, <laughs> all of their hair. They're quick with wit, and they know what they're talking about. The guy looks like he's not going to make it to the next session. He's the best we can do? And then... The woman, uh, Maloney, she's having someone else hold the microphone up, and she's just saying everything's sexist. Yeah, the people in the Upper East Side and the Upper West Side are not sexist. They just think you stink. <laughs> like, this is, this is who we have representing us? Okay, I'm going to go uh, to Tyrus right now. Oh, oh yeah, I'm excited to follow that. <laughs> All right, Tyrus. Hey, look, shake what you, you know, got, Nava. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Biden can say, look, I got the Inflation Reduction uh, Act passed, which has nothing to do with inflation reduction, but who cares? And, you know, I got the Senate to vote for Finland and NATO to be part, uh, Finland and Sweden to be part of NATO and semiconductor and burn pits. And I'm thrilled even Mitch McConnell isn't that excited about winning the Senate. Uh, are the Democrats better positioned than a lot of people thought they were? You know, I would like to say yes, but unfortunately, uh, President Biden, who used to be a moderate monster, and I was actually too strict on things like crime and et cetera, he beat the progressives to become president, but he laid down like a folding chair for them, and he's been their puppet ever since. So it's nice to see. It's not about the politicians. The American people spoke, and I'm happy to see, as a Republican, real Democrats stand up, and this progressive first-world problem stuff where your pronoun is the biggest argument and what's going on in your kitchen table is mm -hmm. taking a backseat to real issues. And I'm happy to see Democrats, where have you been? Welcome back to the table. Mm -hmm. like, but like Jesse, I'm a little uncomfortable, but I'd rather be in that argument with somebody I can have a dialogue with, where mm -hmm. as soon as I open my mouth, like misogynistic. Mm -hmm. And if I say something else, you're a racist. You know, and yeah. You know, it's a little rough being a white supremacist these days. Disappointing. <laughs> Disappointing that Maloney went out like that. Oh, it was, it was misogyny. Yeah. You know, 32 years. 32 I mean, get years, over yeah. it. All right. So there you have it. But I have another video that I wanted to throw into this one big video as well. And um, get all of your thoughts and your opinions. Let's jump into it. Sure, if he left, he's still there. NBC News national political correspondent Steve Kornacki. Steve, good morning. Good, good to see you. If you're still up, thanks for the extra coffee this morning. Um, why exactly are we so focused on this 19th district, a special election in upstate New York? Yeah, well, good morning to you. Well, the reason is because we've been asking a question for the last two months, and I think certainly triggered by that Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade, but also <clears throat> for some other factors. We've been asking the question of if, if whether the police 
political climate broadly, nationally, has shifted away from one where the Republicans were in a strong, maybe even dominant position heading into the midterm elections to one where it's perhaps more neutral and Democrats have opportunities at the Senate and potentially House level that, frankly, not even Democrats thought they would have a few months ago. So the backdrop for this special election, you can see the final result here. Pat Ryan, the Democrat, going to defeat Mark Molinaro, the Republican, the margin just over two points. This is a classic swing district that Ryan did this in. In the 2020 presidential election, Joe Biden had carried this by two points. Take it back to 2016. Donald Trump won here by seven. If I could extend this further out to 2012, you'd see that Barack Obama won this district in 2012. And this is a district that didn't just have that by uh, Obama, Trump, Biden pattern in between in the mid term elections, this has typically featured the kind of backlash that favors the out-of-power party. What I mean by that is Obama won in 2012 here. In 2014, it elected a Republican congressman. Trump won in 2016. In 2018, it elected a Democratic congressman. Mm -hmm. Biden won in 2020. You get a special election. You look at so the national sh polls. Have gotten Joe Biden's Republican. approval rating is in the low 40s. Voters are very sour when it comes to their mood on the economy, when it comes to their uh, mood on inflation, optimism about the future future of the country. These are all supposed to be the basic ingredients that create a very favorable climate for the opposition party. And Mark Molinaro was considered to be one of the strongest recruits that Republicans had in a race like this. Uh, he's a county executive in Dutchess County. That's one of the biggest parts of the district. He ran for governor of New York in 2018, actually carried this same district by <coughs> double digits over Andrew Cuomo when he ran for governor in 2018. And Republicans poured a lot of money, a lot of time time and a lot of resources into trying to get this victory for Molinaro and to make a statement that they were in a position of strength heading into the midterm. Instead, as we say, Pat Ryan ends up exceeding the Joe Biden number and winning this district outright. That's not a result you're supposed to see where, if and when a major wave is forming. And if you put this in broader context, why I say we've been asking this question about whether the national political climate is changing. This is the most dramatic data point we have that I think it, it is. But just take a look at what's been happening over the last few months. And I can draw a line right here. These are other House special elections that have been playing out this spring and this summer. And I draw this line because this is where on the calendar the Supreme Court decision that overturned Roe v. Wade fell. You see, just before that decision in South Texas, there had been a special election. It's a district that Biden had carried by four points. Remember, we were talking a lot about this heavily Hispanic district. There had been a swing towards Republicans. And in fact, the Republican candidates actually won by a margin of four points in that district. That's where we were before the Supreme Court decision on Roe v. Wade. Here are the four special elections that have taken place now since that decision. And what you could see is coming into last night, you had two, one in Nebraska, one in Minnesota, that had been held in districts that Trump won by double digits. The Republicans won them, but by about 10 points less, six points Sheesh. less than Trump did. Democrats were saying these were signs of new momentum for them after that Supreme Court decision because their candidates had so overperformed Joe Biden. They said it's a sign that there was more enthusiasm for Democrats. Wow. And then you got last night a really clean test, a clean test in a classic swing district. Democrats won it outright. By the way, there was another special election in New York last night. Didn't get a lot of resources, didn't get a lot of money, <clears throat> a lot of attention here. It's a district that's really just kind of going away, changing uh, in, in the fall. But they had a special election anyway. Trump won this district by double digits. A Republican won last night. But again, movement of five points in the Democratic direction. We've had four special elections held since that Supreme Court decision in all four of them, the needle has moved in the Democrats' direction, and the Democrats have won the swing district outright. And I just think it's dramatic if you compare that to 2018. This is what, the, this is what special elections in the run-up to a wave election look like. This is 2018. Trump is president. This is the blue wave year. Democrats end up winning 40 House seats. And I mean, look what you were seeing in special elections in 2017 and 2018. Republicans, uh, Democrats were outperforming by 20 points, by 14 points, by 16 points. Six of these eight special elections, Democrats 
overperformed their presidential ter- uh, their presidential level by double digits. So you could see in the special elections heading into 2018 where things were going because Democrats across the board were just overperforming so much. You look at again what I just showed you there in terms of the special elections that we've seen since that Supreme Court decision. They don't fit that pattern at all. So when Democrats start talking about their voters being much more motivated now in the wake of that Supreme Court decision, the political environment changing. This district here, uh, this the 19th district in New York, is just a great example. And if I had one other thing I could just point to, you see there are two counties here that went blue in this district. It's Ulster County and it's Columbia County. They're both pretty good-sized counties. Ulster's the biggest in the district. Here's another measure of Democratic enthusiasm. These two counties, the only two blue counties last night in this district, in the 2020 presidential election, they accounted for 36 percent of all votes cast in this district. Last night, they accounted for 42 percent of all votes cast in this district. Jeez. So Democrats just proportionally squeezed a lot more votes out of the core Democratic areas of this district. That's what we've been seeing in these other special elections where the Democrats have been outperforming. In the Democratic-leaning, Democratic-friendly areas, energy, enthusiasm, turnout among Democrats that dwarfs energy, enthusiasm, and turnout among Republicans. Republicans ran up good numbers in these uh, rural areas here. You see red, but they weren't getting the proportionate level of turnout. That speaks to exactly what Democrats contend has happened nationally since the Supreme Court ruling, that their voters are now more motivated in a way they weren't before, and that, frankly, in a way that Republicans, by, if you look at these special elections, that Republicans may not be right now. All of that just raises and underscores the question we have been asking now for the last few months about whether you talk about the Senate, you talk about weak Republican recruitment in the Senate, and whether Democrats might actually be able to hold on to the control of the United States Senate, that tenuous control they have right now. And honestly, you start to look at results like this, it would not take much for the Republicans to pick up the House. They only need to pick up a small handful of seats. But if you're a Democrat and you want to say there's a scenario where your party actually maintains control of the House somehow this November, this is exactly the kind of result, and these over the last few months are exactly the kinds kinds of results that you want to be seeing to have an actual chance of putting the House into play. So, um, with seeing all of that new information, what are your thoughts and your opinions? Are Republicans in trouble? You know, because the the overwhelming, you know, kind of thoughts and feelings of the whole situation and leading up to midterms was that it's going to be a red wave. Everything was looking like the red wave was coming. As a matter of fact, it was looking like a red tsunami. It was it was looking like something devastating, like we we were going to have to build the ark for some of these folks. But now it seems things have begun to change. Things have begun to turn, it seems. What are your thoughts and your opinions? Uh, you know, when the when the decision came down, the Roe v. Wade decision came down, a lot of people said, uh, you know, because of everything else, we don't we don't think it's going to change too much in terms of, you know, any elections. And now we're seeing a lot of people care about it, at least it seems from based on the numbers. Now, those could have been botched numbers, you guys, you know, or, or something like that. But based on the numbers and the special election in New York, the swing district, it seems like a lot of people care about the Roe v. Wade decision. So my question to you all, you know, and I haven't been diving into this for very long. First off, what are your thoughts and your opinions on th- that spe- special election? You know, the swing district that typically swings back and forth and knowing that even with Biden's low poll numbers, it still swung left by two points. Knowing that and knowing the decision on Roe v. Wade. How are you guys feeling? Talk to me in the comment section. And, you know, and how do you think Republicans can still pull off the win in the midterms? Or do you think it's just over? Do you think Democrats just are going to pull it off in the midterms? Let me know in the comment section. Okay, so my question would be. If it's looking like the left is going to win in the midterms. And it's all because of Roe v. Wade. Would you backtrack? Or would you just take the loss? Let me know in the comment section. And like, share, comment, and of course, hit that subscribe button before you go. Peace and love. I'm out.